like every programming language has its native data type in the same way salty has its data type so there are generally two types of data types in salty one is value data type in that you will have boolean integer fixed point number address byte and string enum okay so these are the value data type and the other data type we have it's called reference data type and in that we have array struct and mapping okay so we're going to cover each of these in detail that how you can create array how you can create boolean so the first data type we have is boolean okay this is how you write bull and we are making public so we can able to see the data value okay so we'll type hey initially i'm not going to change the data type because the default value of this boolean is false always okay and the second one i'm going to take is boolean and i will make it public but here i'm going to change this data type to true okay so this is boolean but this time it's true not false so this is the way you can define boolean in your smart contract okay let's come down now we're going to talk about the other data type which is uint and uint stand for let's say unsigned integer meaning no negative integer only positive okay to write the unt variable this is how we can do it we'll take this unt 8 okay so we have couple of range we have unt 8 is the lowest one then we have unt 16 unt 24 and it will go all the way to unt 256 okay so let me show you what i mean by that so the unt 8 will range from let's say let's say 0 to and 2 multiply by 8 and minus one so okay so whatever value you will get that's the range of this unt8 okay so hope this makes sense so this is the range of unt5 and the range is 255 okay so if you do the calculation you will find that it's 255 is the range of unt8 okay and this one becomes 16 and i will make it 16 if you come here and if i paste here so this is the range i got it simply copy and i'm going to paste it back here so this is the range of the unt16 okay which is very important because later we're going to use the same things because we have to define explicitly about the data variables and that will help us to save gas fee okay so this is the thing that you have to keep in mind because sometimes what happened that the problem will come in terms of underflow overflow okay so we have to deal with that as well so this is the unt6 we have now let's take another one we'll take this let's say unt 256 is the highest one okay and the range lies between let's say we'll take this one 256 minus 1 and same thing we have to copy this and let's find out the value so paste and simply copy this one it's a huge number okay so this is the range of unt 256 so hope this thing's making sense to all of you okay and the reason why we take different ranges because it will allow us to save date save gas fee when we deploy the smart contract so that's the only thing you have to keep in mind but it always better that you should go with this unt 256 so this is how we can define unt 256 and now let me show you that what data we have exactly in this so let's make it public unt 8 and i'm going to assign this the value to 8 and this will become let's say 244 and let's make it to 8 okay and by default it will also take by default it will take 256 okay so whether you define unt 256 or not if you write only unt it will take 256 so that's the key that you have to keep in mind it will always take this 256 so let's sim let's simply comment out this portion and let's try to find out the data okay simply come here and deploy the contract let's deploy it here we have the contract and here you can see we have hey we have hey is false because that's by default the boolean value is false okay false if we click on no we have this true because we have assigned hard-coded value and if we click on you we have this data you can see one two three we have this unt and this is the value we have and if we click on this and this is one we have it so hope this thing's making sense to all of you that how you can define the boolean how you can take this unt and unt only stand for positive number no negative and that's the important point you have to keep in mind okay now let's come here and the second data type we're going to take is it's also a number but in case of negative okay so because sometimes we need a negative number in our smart contract to do certain calculation okay so for that we have int number so we have let's say negative number are allow from int type okay so this is the type we're going to use if we want to add a negative number okay and let's talk about the range that what are the range we have in this as well so again it will have the same range you can define 256 and the range lies between minus 2 and it will go to 255 and you have to do this minus 1 okay so this is the range you will have from the negative to the plus okay so if you want to do the calculations simply remove this one and copy and come back here and paste here 
So this is the positive positive and the same way this is the negative all you have to do is to add the minus negative sign so you can go in the negative till here and you can go positive till here okay in this 256 so that's the important point you have to keep in mind because this is the question one marks question you will get in your exam okay so that's what we have here that's the range now that's the one type let's replicate this and if we make it to 128 so same thing we have to do here we have to make the changes to 128 and the range will automatically will lie in between that range okay so this is how you can define multiple range whether in negative and positive and now let's take this real application so we'll take an example we'll say minus one and we'll say this value and again we'll take another one okay so this is the three int variable level we have taken minus and plus okay and we have to make it this i okay i otherwise it will throw an error so this looks pretty fine now let's come here deploy the contract one more time and if you can see here we have a lot of things so if i click on this ua8 so this is what i have here we have i you can see i can easily able to go back in negative because of this int but if i do the same thing with the unt i'll get an error okay if i click on this i can go into a negative if i click on this i go into positive as well okay so that's how we can use negative and positive number with the help of int and unt so that's how we can define let's come here now let's talk about min and max value in number okay so there is a simple way which you can use to find out the minimum and maximum value of a number okay so that's we have operator for that so let's come here we're going to take this variable int public min int and here we have to define the type so the type we're going to take int and we'll call this min okay so this will give the minimum number of a integer and this will give us the maximum number all you have to do max and here we have to change max okay and sometimes this becomes very helpful because if we want to do certain calculations and we want to prevent the condition of overflow and an underflow in such scenario we can explicitly define that we can't we don't want a number which can exceed this limit okay so in such scenario you can take this one okay so this is the why we have simply deploy the contract one more time and let's have a look if we come here you can see here we have the four functions hey let's call this max and you can see this is the max number you can take in this 256 okay or if you define only in that will take this 256 range okay so this is the range if you do this minimum you will have the minus signs but the rest is same okay so this is how you will get the maximum and minimum number in salty smart contract with the help of this function okay so hope this makes sense comment out this out to all of you guys and now let's talk about a couple of more examples so the second data type we have is is the array okay and just like other programming language like c python and javascript we have array we also have array in solid smart contract so let me give this command in salty the data types bytes represent and sequence of bytes and generally they are two types okay so there is no difference between a byte and a string okay byte is more gas efficiency so when you will use byte instead of string it will save you gas at the time of deployment okay so you can take a array as a byte or you can take a take a array as a string or as a number okay it's totally up to you okay so now let's come here here we have this fixed size bytes array okay and the other one we have is dynamic size byte array okay so these are the two types of array we have one is the fixed size which you will define explicitly that you want only five arrays in that particular array okay or it could be a dynamic based on the function okay so these are the two types of di data type array we have so that's the array now let me do this command so when you define byte okay in smart contract it's represent dynamic byte okay so that's the only thing you have to keep in mind that but if you want to explicitly define that you want only fixed size area then you have to set the number okay we're going to cover everything about this array as well in the later video okay so i'll take byte one and i'll by default i will don't add anything and this will come byte b okay simply deploy the contract and let's try to have a look here you have these two functions okay so let's simply comment this one and i make it public so i can able to access the data so let's make it public I'll say public and this will become also public and let's try to have a look what we have inside this let's deploy the contract and here we have that calling this function and you can see this is how the byte data will represent okay it will start with 0x and then it will have the data okay if you call this it will have this data so this is the default value 
Now, what if I want to add value into my byte data? You can do it very easily. Okay. So simply comment this out and I'm going to replicate it and I'm going to assign predefined value. So I'll take this. Okay. Because this is the data. This is how I have to add the data. We start with zero X, which represents the byte. Okay. And then you can add the data, whatever you want. Okay. So let's define this as well. And simply comment this portion and now let's simply deploy the contract and make the call if you call it you can see here we got the data okay and this one is more if memory efficient okay so instead of string we're going to use this byte a lot in our future smart contract okay you all know that computer can understand only binary code okay so this is how this code will represent okay so we'll start with one zero one zero and this is so i don't know okay and if you want to know about this binary code you can simply do google and you can easily able to find and learn more about it okay so this is how it will represent in the ethereum virtual machine okay so that's the byte code we have looking fine and now let's have a look to the other data type we have so the other we have is address okay so we'll come here and we'll take this address public hey and we'll take this address public and we'll assign the address okay so i'll come here and i'll go back to this here i have the address so i can simply copy and I want to show you the difference that when you have an address and when you don't have the address. So I will go to simply pass it without code. Okay. So it's a salty programming language in that you don't need to pass the this address into a string. You just pass it like this. Okay. So that's the addresses we have. Now what we can do is simply deploy the contract. Deploy on. And here we have the transaction. If I click on this adder, you will see that this is the address which we have defined here in the contract. But but by default, we don't have anything here. Okay. So this is how the address will represent when you when there is no address okay so this is how it will look hope things are making sense to all of you guys understand that what we are doing exactly i'm just going a little faster because these are the basic things and we're going to get into more detail when we have a dedicated session on each of these data type and when we use in the function okay so simply comment this out and what i can do and now let's check the default value of each of this data type because in solidity there is no concept of null and undefined okay so what are the predefined data we'll get when we'll use any one of these data types so let's have a look on that so i'll say default value I'll first take it boolean and the default value is going to be false okay let's say false we'll take another unt and its default value is going to be let's say zero okay this will default value zero and we'll take the int it will also become zero because this is the default value we have for the number there is no concept of null and undefined okay if you don't provide anything you will have zero and let's take the let's take the address so this is what we'll get zero 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 with this okay that these are the default value we have for each of these data type same goes for the array byte size same goes for that okay but these are the most most common used data types and that's why i'm covering this one as well now let's come here delete upload this and let's look at this if i click on this false here we have the false if you click on this unt zero we have zero if we click on hey hit this is the address by default address we get this zero zero and the last one we have this number is a zero okay so hope this things makes sense to all of you guys whatever we have covered you have to keep all this thing in mind because these are the things going to be asked in your interview session that what type of arrays we have what is the difference between bytes and what is the difference between string which one will save more gas fee if you want to take a number into a negative then what data type you're going to use what are the range of certain units int or unt so these are the important things you have to keep in mind that what it does and how you can utilize it in your smart contract right now we have covered about this data type and we have talked about the unt and int variable so you must know that why these range is important and what kind of problem it will create in our smart contract if we don't use that particular way if you want to optimize our smart contract for paying the less gas fee then how we can utilize it in a more efficient way this in variable okay so these are the things you have to keep in mind to write a well optimized smart contract okay so that's the only thing i want to cover hope you guys have found this video valuable about this data type let's move to the next video